So Dolphins week, you know, um, had a good walkthrough already. The guys are locked in, ready to go. Um, so we're fired up, you know, relatively healthy coming out of that last game. John Miller still dealing with a concussion. So he's still going through the protocol day to day right now. Uh, but other than that, we came out pretty healthy and, and most guys will be able to practice these next couple of days. Right. You guys are, are coming back from injury. You guys are still in the spirit of it. What does that tell you? That, that we got, we're heading the right direction in terms of the culture. Um, not with the win and loss results, but uh, I would argue that that's, that's the foundation we're, we got to build is with the right people that are about the right things and care about what we're trying to build here. And so that's one small way you see that is guys still competing and not trying to find ways out, trying to find ways to stay on the field. And I, that part has been really encouraging to see from our team. How much of an improvement do you feel there's been with respect to the running game, with respect to the defense? When you were at the midpoint of the season, yep. where you are now, how much of an improvement do you feel? I feel like we've gotten better in both areas. And uh, that's, again, I, I think that we have a good coaching staff and the players have really bought in and settled in to what we're asking them to do. And certainly um, have seen great improvement in both those sides of the ball. At the end of the day, it's our lack of explosives on offense that have really prevented us from scoring more points. You know, and our red zone struggles have been well documented. You know, We have struggles there. And um, that's an area we certainly have to improve in. But that's that's at the end of the day. It's, it's our, our lack of winning in the turnover battle, our red zone performance on offense, and our lack of explosives down the field in the passing game have, have really been reasons you can pinpoint things haven't gone our way. Yeah, I think people people that watch tape recognize it. And oftentimes with defensive tackles, um, I remember reading earlier in the year before we played the Rams that Aaron Donald wasn't having the same year he's used to having because of his stats. And when you watch the tape, um, it was not fun to watch because, I mean, he was being triple. I didn't think triple teams was a real wor real thing you could do to a D tackle, but I saw it on tape. It was happening. And so same thing with Geno in, in, a, in, a, in a little bit different sense at times, but – Sometimes, because guys are really focused on stopping him, um, it allows other guys to do a, a better job and get more stats. And so sometimes that's what happened. But the people that watch the tape and vote on it, they see a, a really good player. And so they vote him to the Pro Bowl team. And, and we're happy for Gino. When you have a guy, Brady Shelton, you guys call up, who's just, right. you've only seen him essentially as like a scout guy. Correct. And, what, do you, what do you see in somebody that makes you decide you want to bring him up and take a look? How does that work? What are you, what are you You're looking at traits that you've seen show up in practice and the reasons why you brought him on the team. And sometimes you don't really know. Because when you sign a guy, particularly late in the year, practice is starting to calm down a little bit. It's not the same physicalness, speed. So really the only way you get a look at some people is, all right, let's get them up and, and put them out there in, in front of the crowd and see what they do. And whether it's this week or next week, you know, depending on inactives. But that, that's some things you look at sometimes with those guys who have been on the practice squad. They're here for a reason. Um, so when it's possible, you try to get them up and see what they can do uh, in a game. What's the reaction like when you give that news? I mean, those mm -hmm. are pretty hardened guys that have been considering getting out of football a lot of times. Like, sure. What's that reaction like when you give them that news? Oftentimes it's a great reaction, you know, and, and it means a lot to them. They put in a lot of hard work. And so to be rewarded, you know, with the opportunity, financial, however you want to look at it, it's – um, it's a reward for good work and doing things the right way, and, and those are the things that we value. You're almost like a walk on getting a scholarship. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, uh, um, I guess it's all relative at certain levels, you know. So, so you know, the Dolphins have, have used 80 players this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think of 80 players, is, is that almost unimaginable? It's a lot of players, you know, and, and they've had a lot of injuries. But what you see is a well-coached team that's still fighting. You know, the guys that they're playing with are fighting for opportunities. And uh, you see that on the tape. And um, some of the games they've lost, they've been winning there at the end. It's very familiar to other things I've seen from other teams. Um, just haven't quite finished some of them. But uh, they beat some good football teams, beat the Eagles, beat the Colts, um, beat the Jets. You know, some, some good football teams out there that they've defeated. So uh, 
our guys got to be up for the test because these guys are going to come and really challenge us, and they're well coached. He's fun to watch, you know. Of the court, I think I've played him. I don't know how many teams he's played for that I've played against, but several. And he um, ha plays with a lot of confidence. Plays with a lot of energy. You can tell that uh, his teammates really gravitate toward him, you know. And so th those are traits that keep you around for a long time. And he's had production, and so certainly somebody you respect for the journey he's been on. And he's he's you know doing some really good things for him. At however, how old is he? Is he? He's 37, so he's older than me. He's old. He's really old. Um, <laughs> so certainly you respect players like that that have um, certainly impressed the coaching staffs that they've been on and, and, and keep finding jobs and keep starting jobs, and there, there's a reason for all that. I mean, he's got to have, he's got to have some vision of talent. I would think he's always – Oh, there's no question. They, yeah. They, they, it's always written off as one of these smart guys. But, I mean, he's no, he, 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 he's an aggressive quarterback. That's how I'd describe him. He's very aggressive and plays with a lot of confidence and understands the structure of the defenses and how you got to attack them. And so he plays with a lot of confidence and gives his guys a chance to make some plays. And so it's it's always been some really positive traits of his uh, over the years that I've, I've faced him. Does that say he gives defensive players a chance as well sometimes <laughs> with his confidence? I mean, if one opportunity knocks, you got to answer, right? I mean, that's, that's right. You know, it's like any quarterback we face. If they're going to give you a chance, you got to go make the play. And that's something that, of course, we've, we've stressed over the course of the season because that's a direct correlation of winning and losing is creating those turnovers. And so... Um, we, we can certainly be better than that on defense. Zach, were you in the loop ahead of time on AJ going to see his specialist? Yes. And what's your reaction to him putting a period on whether he's going to play this year? Right. I mean, that's, you know, it's something we fought through all year. And I, I certainly know that AJ's intention is, is was try to get healthy, try to play. Um, you know, just went up there to check it. It wasn't like any there was any setback or anything like that. He just wanted to make sure everything was good. And, and he'll be good in the off season. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll still make some decisions on him here these next two weeks about this season, um, but you know, he and I have had some great conversations. I, I've been involved in his line of thinking and, and where he's at physically, and you know, it's 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 unfortunate that um, it, it was a very difficult injury that's hard to come back from. You know, and the, and at, at the end of the day, um, your wishful thinking was that it wasn't going to be so long term, but there was really at the end of the day, no way of knowing that. And this was a really tough injury for him that's kept him out the whole season. And we've all seen him try to fight to get back out there, and it just hasn't worked out. How difficult was it to have basically a 52 man roster that turned up this season? And with Olegawa, you know, limited role, 51 man roster, I mean, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of your hamstrung a little bit, right? Well, you certainly want to maximize your roster, and there were reasons for us doing it because. Um, you know, we never knew how long it was going to be with AJ. And certainly, you always love the thought of having him out there and what it does for you. And the, I mentioned the explosiveness. That's a big part of it. And and it also takes the pressure off your other receivers, you know, and they, and they can play the role that um, they're best fit for. And so anytime you lose a great player like that, it, it causes other people to have to stand up. And, and we've seen some receivers get some great opportunities that we wouldn't have maybe known enough about them had it happened otherwise. And so you just got to take the good with the bad. and. And uh, find the silver linings in it where you can, and that's what we've we've tried to do. When, when AJ says if he's tagged, he will not participate in the off-season program. Does that make you doubt his commitment to the franchise? If that was the case, no. That's these are things we'll address in the off-season, obviously. And um, I don't I don't question his commitment to anything. I, I know what he's about. He's a he's a genuine person. Um, I've enjoyed being around him. It's obviously unfortunate what happened this year, but. Um, certainly, those are conversations to have in the off season with with him and, and with our staff. But um, you know, I, I really like the thought of AJ catching balls for us. That's, a, that's something that gets me really excited. How, I mean, how hard is it to deal when when players get into this situation where it is contract time and that's looming to 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 go th you know through those waters, those yeah. choppy waters of not thinking about it, but still understanding the importance. And how do you deal with that as a coach? How tough is that to, to deal with? Well, you, first, you have to form these relationships with these players. So um, because th this comes up, it happens. And there's a lot of noise outside the building, you know, from, from I'm not just talking, I'm just talking to any guy whose contract is up. And so those are just things you, you manage as best you can. And you make sure you have a great relationship with the player. 
and that they're all in. And when they're healthy, they're, they're doing everything they can to help you win um, when they're in the contract, playing for the team. And then you deal with the other stuff in the offseason. So I, th I think when, when you got good relationship with the players, that's that's what takes care of most things. Would he need to show you at some point though that he's hundred percent healthy? I mean, before you would have confidence that he can be a productive player moving forward. Those those are things that you know we really address in the off season, and um, there's a bunch of what ifs you know that can come into play with a lot of players in that regard, and um, so we'll just we'll proceed as we see fit. Uh, he's anytime I talk to Gino, he's he, he's a great commentator. He just um, he 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 doesn't like talking to you guys, maybe. But uh, he he's been great and enjoy being around him. He's about the right things. He's he 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 gets in his work. He's a professional. He's a Pro Bowl level player. Um, he's done it for a long time. Really happy to have him. What is your view of him as a teammate? Good teammate does what's asked. Um, cares about his teammates. You know, I, I do see that. I, I see him talking to Ren. You know, as the season goes along, trying to help those guys, those young guys get better. And so very, very pleased with, with how he goes about his work. AJ, you've been a <coughs> player at high school, college, NFL. So when it's an elite player and he has an injury, he has that expectation of, I, I got to be elite. Right? Mm -hmm. I got to be. Do you think, do you think that, that's kind of a battle, too? I'm, I'm not saying it's a double edged sword, but it's like when a guy has the physical abilities that he has, and trying to get back up with the physical ability in rehab, that's even tougher, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's part of, uh, you know, being a professional athlete is just navigating things like that, and it's not always easy. And um, he certainly wants to be at his best, and he knows his body better than anybody else and what he has to do to be effective and what that feels like. And um, so you just you, you trust those players that you trust. You, you trust a guy like that, and, and you trust that he knows his body, and, and we're making the right decision. AJ said if he had played this year, you'd have, you wouldn't have one win. Do you mm -hmm. feel the same way? I like to have great players available to play for us because that's how you win a lot of football games. And there's certainly a lot of things that we, we could have done better at, at as coaches and players to win more games um, with the roster that we had this year. And, and we did get it done. And there's no excuses for that. You have to be accountable for it. And again, we have to continue just to, to learn from the mistakes that we made and the opportunities that have slipped out of our hands and make sure that um, we just get better going forward and we learn from this stuff. Well, he's he, you know, he's a great weapon, and it, it always hurts to lose a great player like that. But you look around the league, and it happens. And so you just, again, no one, no one wants to hear excuses for that. So don't give them. You got to go out there and just, just work with the hand that you're dealt. And we got guys that are about the right things and want to do what we we ask them to do. And um, it's our job to get the most out of them.